I'm Dr. Anthony Cave, a Stanford and Harvard trained anesthesiologist and integrative medicine specialist. And every week, at least one patient comes to me with elusive symptoms of chronic fatigue that no one has been able to diagnose appropriately or treat. In many cases, it ends up being myalgic encephalomyelitis or chronic fatigue syndrome, what we call MECFS. But patients don't know the right way to describe their symptoms for their doctors to connect the dots to get them on treatment faster. Instead, many of these patients are prescribed antidepressants that aren't addressing the root cause of what their body needs. And I want you to better appreciate what's going on in your body so that you can advocate for yourself with your doctor to get your treatment started sooner. Because even in the 21st century, many doctors still believe that MECFS is all in your head, not accounting for its involvement of your spinal cord, your brainstem, and the rest of your body. In fact, this condition used to be called soldier's heart because these patients would march against all odds in their quest to find out what's wrong with their bodies. More recently, it's being described in conjunction with long COVID, and I've even done a video of how MECFS affects your body under anesthesia when you're having surgery. In this video, you'll learn what MECFS is so that you can describe your symptoms and your history better to your doctor so that hopefully your diagnosis and treatment will start faster. And in the end, I'll share my diagnostic and treatment approach so that you can better advocate for yourself or any loved ones who might be struggling with MECFS. And because I value your time, I put timestamps in the description below so that you can find a part of this video that's relevant for you. To help your doctor potentially diagnose MECFS, you need to know what constitutes it. It's characterized by six months of moderate to severe symptoms in these three categories. Number one is impaired social, work, or personal functioning accompanied by fatigue. Number two is post-exertional malaise, either after physical or psychological stressor. And number three is unrefreshing sleep. Some patients also have small, soft, non-tender nodes around their armpits, in their neck, behind their ear, or in their groin area, and you need to tell your doctor if you felt these so that they can specifically examine those areas. People get tripped up diagnosing MECFS because they think it's just fatigue, but it's also cognitive impairment potentially and autonomic dysregulation like lightheadedness from your blood pressure being too low when you stand up suddenly. So you need to keep track of all these symptoms when you're describing your fatigue to your doctor so you can help them holistically understand what you're experiencing. These symptoms need to be around at least half the time, and they can't be from excessive exertion with inadequate rest and replenishment. For example, if you're running half a marathon every day and not eating or sleeping, that's not necessarily MECFS. What most doctors and patients don't appreciate is that the reason MECFS affects the body so severely is because it's the result of nearly all of your organ systems running into trouble. For example, the nervous system and immune system, which are very tightly linked and affected in MECFS. Fortunately though, patients with MECFS do not appear to be immunocompromised or susceptible to opportunistic infections. Our endocrine system, referring to our hormonal balance, is also affected by MECFS, especially our stress hormone balance. So is our cardiovascular system and our gut and microbiome health. Because MECFS can have so many different manifestations, I believe it's so important for doctors to sit down with their patients to really identify which organ systems are most heavily burdened by the MECFS, because that can then direct which lab tests should be pursued and potentially which treatment options are gonna be appropriate for the patient. I believe MECFS has many different subtypes or flavors. For example, a patient with a very heavy cardiovascular burden of their MECFS symptoms may not have the same treatment approach as someone with a very heavy neurocognitive burden of their MECFS symptoms. MECFS also affects more people than we previously thought. In fact, we thought MECFS used to be a rare condition. But that's simply not the case. It tends to affect women more than men, and sometimes significantly more so, like in this study, when women were more than three times more frequently affected than men. MECFS is also more common in patients with certain key conditions. And this means you need to tell your doctor if you have any of these key conditions that are more likely to cluster with MECFS. 
things like postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, or what we call POTS, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, or EDS, fibromyalgia, TMJ syndrome, depression, PTSD, or chronic pain, even sensitivity to light, smell, and sounds, migraines, mast cell activation syndrome, food allergies, irritable bowel syndrome, overactive bladder, endometriosis, or premenstrual syndrome. If any of these conditions are affecting you, let me know in the comments below. And please share what you're learning with your friends and loved ones. If you are learning something new, please hit that like button and subscribe to keep up with more of my medical advocacy content. You can always learn more about these conditions by visiting my clinic's website, clarishealth.com, in the description below. The big issues that delay diagnosis and treatment in my patients is our inability to always identify a trigger to a patient's ME-CFS and specifically what subtype or flavor of symptoms they have. And this is so important because I believe that treatment should be tailored to what specific symptoms that patient is experiencing with their subtype of ME-CFS. So you should start by telling your doctor if you've had any of these potential triggers in the recent past starting with infections like COVID, EBV, herpes virus, or even bacterial or protozoal infections. Physical stressors like surgery or traumatic brain injuries, including concussions. Severe psychological stressors, especially PTSD. And environmental toxic exposures, on top of any lifelong symptoms that you've experienced that might suggest a genetic predisposition to nervous system dysfunction. Independent of the specific trigger, the mitochondria, or the powerhouse of the cell, appears to be poisoned in MECFS, impairing its ability to produce chemical energy, what we call ATP. And that's one of the key problems because every cell in your body needs ATP to function and thrive. Now that you're many experts in MECFS, I'm going to share my diagnostic approach and treatment approach based on these different subtypes. First, we need blood tests to rule out liver and kidney disease, anemia, thyroid problems, or muscle inflammation. In some patients, I'll also order a sleep study, an AM cortisol, B12 and folate, and maybe even an echocardiogram or electrocardiogram to assess their heart function. It depends on their specific symptoms. It's also very important to rule out medication or drug side effects. So please be open and honest about all the drugs and medications that you take when talking to your doctor. In patients with heavy neurocognitive burdens of their MECFS, like brain fog and impaired decision-making, the nervous system appears to be dysregulated, especially if there's been a history of COVID or PTSD. My treatment approach is to rebalance the two sides of the central nervous system, the fight-flight response, or the sympathetic nervous system, and the rest and digest response, or the parasympathetic nervous system, using the stellate ganglion block. The stellate ganglion block is a specialized nerve block that rapidly quiets your fight-flight nerve. It's one of the few effective treatment modalities for long COVID for this reason, we believe. So this is a reasonable treatment approach for patients with that neurocognitive burden and concomitant PTSD or history of COVID or even long COVID. I linked a video below where I walk through the stellate ganglion block while I'm performing it on a patient. You can check it out below. In patients with depression or chronic pain accompanying their MECFS, it's important to rule out a contribution from their central nervous system affecting their body's metabolism and energy balance. In some of these patients, their MECFS can be significantly improved by uplifting that weight of depression or chronic pain that's been weighing them down. Because IV ketamine is such a safe and rapid acting treatment for many cases of challenging depression or chronic pain, many of my patients find significant MECFS relief once we've rebalanced the central nervous system with ketamine. What's super interesting about ketamine is that it also has direct anti-fatigue effects independent of its antidepressant effects. So this is not simply throwing an antidepressant at MECFS, but rather using ketamine to address the central nervous system dysfunction that depression or chronic pain can cause. 
IV ketamine can also be useful for patients in whose ME-CFS was triggered by surgery. In patients with exercise intolerance or neurocognitive burdens that suggest mitochondrial dysfunction, I consider IV NAD plus or NR supplementation. These modalities directly support energy metabolism in the organs that need the most energy, the brain and the heart. In patients with lifelong susceptibility to fatigue episodes, I discuss the possibilities of genetic abnormalities that might predispose their body to being hit hard by ME-CFS triggers. I'll perform genomics testing to identify defects in enzymatic pathways that involve mitochondrial health, inflammation, B12 metabolism, circadian rhythm, thyroid hormone conversion, and even gut permeability. There may even be genetic factors that predispose to the severity of infection or environmental toxin exposures, which can also be triggers for ME-CFS. Based on the patient's specific clinical history and genetic results, targeted interventions can then be discussed that are customized to that patient. I prefer this targeted approach because I don't want to be throwing stuff at the wall and hoping something sticks in a patient who's been struggling for years or decades with their fatigue symptoms. And the goal of these treatments is to use the fewest number of interventions for the greatest and longest lasting benefit. We want to restore the body's healing capacity to rebalance the nervous system dysregulation that underlies most ME-CFS cases. It's rarely one size fits all, and that's why it's so important to share your specific symptoms with your doctor to guide your treatment. To learn more about my treatment approach, you can visit my clinic's website at claris-health.com and subscribe to keep up with all of my educational content. And remember, you have more power over your health than you've probably ever been told.